What up YouTube? Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be upgrading the firmware on our Wanhao Duplicator i3 Plus or any of the clones, so the Balco, the Cocoon Create, or the Maker Select and all that jazz. So let's get into it. So the first thing we need to get is a program called Etcher. So if you just type into Google Etcher, it'll be the first link. And this program allows us to make a sort of bootable image that goes onto the SD card to then put all the images into the LCD screen. So just download the, click the download for Windows button and then save it somewhere. Uh, I'm just going to save it in with my firmware folder. Now I've already got this installed, but I'm just going to show you how to install it anyway. If you just click on it, go to install, click I agree and then it'll do its thing, install everything, which is rather nice. So once that's installed, it'll then come up with this uh, box, which asks you to select an image, select your card reader or whatever you're using, and then the ability to flash once you've selected both of those. But before we do that, we want to actually go to the uh, ADVI3PP um, GitHub, and this will give us access to all the firmware we need. So just type that onto Google, it'll be the first link again. Now, uh, for the actual GitHub on here, if you want to download it directly from here, these are the non-built, pre-built ones, so you'd have to actually go into and run it through, um, uh, what's it called, the Arduino environment, and then build it and then export it from that. Uh, I find it much easier and a much simpler way of doing it is just to hop on to his Patreon page, and if you donate uh, I think it's a dollar or two dollars or whatever the whatever the lowest one is. It doesn't matter which one you donate. Donate. I would recommend donating whatever you can because he does some absolutely great work. If we go over to his Patreon, this is uh, Mr. Sebastian. He's some excellent work. But it doesn't matter which tier you use. Um, unfortunately, one dollar sold out, but two dollars isn't exactly expensive. Um, this gives you access to all the pre-built ones and everything that I'm going to be doing now is going to be based off the pre-built because it's a lot easier and it's a lot cleaner. So um, if you want to sort of learn a bit more about that, if you go to how the how to flash your firmware sort of page and then in here there will be links to everything. See, it's only for uh, supporters only on Patreon, but these are all the pre-built ones you'll need. So you'll need this link here which gives you all the images, and then you'll need... Uh, oh, this is another thing. I never bothered with this, but um, this allows you to have the tilted screen and access to the SD card, which I'll talk a bit more about in a bit. Um, and then you want to download the right firmware, again, from... depending on which printer that you're using. And uh, again, all this is from the supporters page, and you just click the link, and then it will give you the access to download it once you are a patron. Uh, but yes, uh, obviously you don't have to do that, but I would very much recommend it. So, if you get those files, I've already got them, because I, I actually did this a while ago, but uh, I'm just only getting around to doing the video. Whoops. These are the three files that you should end up with after you've downloaded everything. They'll originally come in zip files, uh, so just extract them, and you should have a ADV i3PP LCD folder with the image file in it. You should have an Arduino core file which is uh, used if you want to tweak anything and repackage it, but we won't be needing that. And then you will have the actual .hex file itself for uh, the firmware on the actual main board itself. And this number will just be whichever number you're downloading, so always download the latest version if you can. But uh, yes, uh, if we flick then back on over to Etcher, and what you want to do is, once you have the files of course, is I'm going to unplug that SD card. You want to put in an SD, a micro SD card, I would use uh, well, it is very much recommended to use eight gigs or less because it can be it can lead to some funky results. So I'm just going to plug in my SD card, and then you want to select your image, and then inside of here, uh, this is uh, local etch or whatever. If I go to my 3D printing folder, wherever I've put that uh, firmware. And then, see, I've actually got an older version here, but uh, the latest version is like 4.0.8 or something like that. But, yeah, just download whatever the latest version is. And then you want to use this .image file here. Well, actually go into it. This .image file. And then click Open. 
and then that will give you a thing uh, I'm saying this is confirm this is the one and then you want to select target and in this case I don't want to use my hard drive that would be bad um, I want to use the multi card reader 8 gigs this is the 8 gigs SD card that I've got in put inside so click continue and then you just click flash uh, it'll probably ask you do you want to allow admin permissions just click, that. just click yes and then let this do its thing and then we'll be back when it's done So as you can see that is all now finished and it says flash complete and you had a little notification at the bottom so that's it you've just got to close your etcher program and then if we go into the um, thing of gummy where's it gone actually ignore that no it, it auto ejects it for you so if you eject it and then if I put it back in we can have a quick look to see what's on it There we go. Have you got it now? Was renamed it to ADV i3PP, and then on here you'll see there's all the DWIN, whatever the setup, and all this jazz. This is exactly how it should be for the printer to recognise it. So whatever you do, don't modify this at all. I've only opened it up just to make sure that it did flash. Okay. Also, as a just a note, I forgot to mention there, uh, it will wipe whatever SD card you're putting in it. So make sure you've got a backup. If you're using the one like I'm using off my uh, Creality CR10, I've backed up all the prints and stuff off of that first, then ran the etcher, which then formats it, wipes it, and does the image, and then you'll be not crying afterwards realizing you've lost everything <laughs> it's quite a good idea not to do that so now we've got that done and we've got all the files that we've need to move on we'll uh, flick over to the printer and i'll show you how to get the front of the printer off and insert the sd card so first off you want to just unscrew the two screws at the front now uh, if you've done the z brace mod like i have you'll have to unscrew them both and then uh, just move the feet to the left and to the right. Uh, there's just enough room to slide them out. Next, you want to get the small Allen key that came with your printer, or uh, in my case, I'm actually using just a little screwdriver set that I've got. And then just loosen the grub screw that's holding the Y bars in place, the bars that the actual bed runs on. Once you've loosened them, then you can just slip the two bars out of their little holders where you loosen the grub screws and then just rest them gently on top of the printer. Now the next bit's kind of fiddly, but if you're gentle, you can lift the left side of the front of the printer over the top of the Z-Brace foot and then that way it gives you access to the SD card. Now this isn't exactly recommended but I struggled really hard to get it in place because if you slip it too high or too low you'll actually go past where the slot is and end up losing your SD card so I used a little pair of pliers and gently gingerly pushed it in place and then pushed it back in with my finger. Now you want to switch on your 3D printer and then just wait for all the images to finish flashing. Uh, once they've finished changing then you know it's ready to go to the next stage. Just so you know this has been sped up so don't be concerned if yours is not going as fast as the video is. Now again not recommended but I used a pair of pliers and gently pulled the ST card back out and then you basically just want to reverse what we did before so put the front back into place and line it up with the y-axis rails also my apologies for this dodgy camera angle I forgot I had the camera zoomed in once they're back in place you want to just tighten each of the grub screws back up one thing to note is there is a little slot in the each of the feet of the z-brace mod if you're using that that the little bit of metal on the front of the printer goes in front of not behind of so if you end up being behind it when you tie and try and tighten the screws back up you'll end up crushing it so be careful about that also I would recommend putting something underneath the middle of the printer just to help you line up the screw holes because they're kind of fiddly to get into place once you've done that you just need to plug in your 3d printer into your computer with the USB port and then fire up Cura once you're in Cura and your USB is connected, you want to go to Settings, Printer, and then Manage Printers. 
and inside there you want to make sure your printer is activated and then click the update firmware button and then click the upload custom firmware button go and navigate to your .hex file uh, links will all be in the description and then just let it do its thing and then it'll install and then all will be good once that's done you just want to hit close and you'll notice on the printer there will be a little screen with a bit of information on there just click the button in the top right and then you're ready to use your printer at this point you can just unplug your USB port and switch on your printer and everything will be running from the printer itself. One thing I would recommend doing just in case is to wind your bed all the way down and then re-level it whilst it's preheated. So here I'm just going into the menu setting it to preheat to 60 and then 210. I then went into the leveling wizard and then leveled the bed as you normally would. There's a few extra options in there which is quite nice. You can select exactly which corner you want to level at one time which is a rather nice feature. So I continued and finished on that and then we can get on to it doing a test print. Now for the test print, I actually decided to do something that I couldn't do before, and that was print the Polymaker Polymax PC at a 265 degree and a 90 degree on the bed, which the last firmware just had a hard limit where it just could not go that hot. So this would be a really good test to see how good this firmware is. Well there you have it, there's a completed upgrade. It's not actually too bad this one considering you have to take the whole front of the printer off to get to the LCD screen. And if you haven't already done the Z-Brace mod then you'll have a lot easier time with it. This firmware actually gives you loads of new features such as the homing is much faster, there's extra points in the leveling wizard and you can actually select which points you want it to go to. There's more temperature options, more presets and it's basically just a really good firmware all around. So, if you're able to, I would definitely go on to the author's Patreon and support him on there because that gives you access to all the pre-built, which makes setup so much easier, as well as you're supporting the development of the firmware and make sure it keeps going. So I'm not affiliated in any sort of way. I just really like the firmware. So definitely try and go on to there if you can. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed, please like, comment and subscribe. It helps me out a lot. And I shall see you next time. Ta-da! Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Mm, 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 mm. Now it's hot. Really warm today, and I'm having to stand, stand, sit under these bloody lights. <laughs>